Hey there everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to have a look at getting started with an army from the Ottoman Empire. Now if you've seen the rather rambling live video I did, I talked about there being effectively three different types of Ottoman army. There's the Egypto-Ottoman one, the Turkish Ottoman and the nizam Ejedid one. Now today we're going to look at collecting a more general Turkish army, although it is going to contain some Egyptian elements as well. So... It's going to be a sort of a bit of a 50-50 one, this one. But if you'd like to see me do a video on solely collecting an Egyptian army or solely collecting a Nizam el Jedid one, then please let me know and I'll look at doing one of those videos in the future. Now, those of you who've not seen these videos before, we put in place a series of, of rules, I guess you could call them, just so we know where we are when we're collecting this army. So the first one of this, perhaps the most important one, is going to be the size of a normal or a medium-sized unit. And we're going to set that at 24 figures for infantry and 8 for cavalry. Usually for artillery, we go for 1 to 2 guns to represent a battery. That's a little bit more of a movable feast, that one. But for the Ottomans, they tended to have quite large batteries of 10 guns, so we'll probably go with 2 guns for a battery of those. The prices that I'm going to be quoting, they are right at time of recording, well, and time of broadcasting, because it's the same day for this one. But, obviously, you know, those things do change. And I will be going for the RRP. Now, particularly when it comes to plastic models, they are usually available cheaper from third parties. The ones I'm going to talk about today, I'm not sure that you can buy those from the outpost. But if you can, then there is an affiliate link in the description down below. Or, failing that, then there are other available uh, outlets out there. So, Wargames Emporium will be another one in Sheffield. Or, Element Games will be one. Firestorm Games in Cardiff. I went there quite recently. That was a lovely shop. And there's a million other places as well. But, I will be going off the RRP. The recommended retail price from their websites. One thing I won't be including, however, are the shipping costs. Because, you know, these vary from location to location. So, I won't be including postage you'll have to pay for that yourself. I also won't be including the tools, the glue, the paints, the brushes, you know, all that kind of stuff that you need to get an army ready because I'm assuming that, you know, if, if you're interested in getting started in this period, you've either collected an army from the period before or maybe you've collected another game like 40k or something like that. So you've already got those tools available. I do intend to do a video on, like, getting started tools and supplies though so i'll do that uh, at some point in the future so keep an eye out for that but i will be including the need to buy bases as and when necessary now one thing that is going to be slightly different in this video is that i'm going to be looking at some manufacturers from outside of my currency so i'm in the uk so we use great british pounds here i am going to be looking at some manufacturers uh, I'm going to be looking at some US dollar prices there's the potential to look at Aussie dollar dues as well I'm not sure if I'm going to need to, but if so, it's particularly with the dollars and euros, I'm going to be going off of Google's money exchange rate. Now, this is usually higher than you would get from PayPal. It's more in your favor than you would get from PayPal. They do screw you over. I bought something in euros recently. It was 1.1 euros to the pound, which was ugh, horrible. But uh, yeah, so again... It's not going to be a perfect representation, but it kind of gets you in the ballpark, I think. And finally, we come to the budget. Now, I always set a budget of £100 for the first month, with which, with which we can buy the core of our army, and £100 for the second month. I changed that with the Imperial Guard video, and I'm going to change it here today as well. I'm going to be straight up with you. We're four minutes in, and I'm going to give you hit you with some knowledge. Buying an Ottoman army is not going to be cheap. The vast, vast majority of the figures are going to be metal. They're going to be quite a specialist range as well. So you may have to spend that little bit more. So I just, I'll just i warn you straight away, this ain't a cheap army. So we're going to up the the price that we've... Uh, the, uh, the money, the budget, that's the word I'm trying to think of. We're going to up the budget to £150 for the first month and £150 for the second month. I will say, though, we're still not going to get a huge amount for our money on this one. If you've seen the How to Collect the British for the Peninsula War video, I was absolutely amazed how much we got for 200 quid. Well, the, this is the flip side of that video. I think you might be surprised how little you actually get. So, anyway, let's get into it. With £150 in our sweaty palms, how are we going to start 
an army that will bring death to the infidels. Well, firstly, because it's going to be a Turkish army, this one, we're going to look at the core of the Sultan's fighting arm, the Kapakuli, as they were known. The core of the Kapakuli, the Janissaries. Now, there are two main companies that sell Janissaries, and I should say, you look for the rangers from like the Siege of Vienna, the 17th century, 18th century, Seven Years' War, anything like that, because the uniform is the same. So, the two main manufacturers I'm going to look at today, well, there's three actually. The first one is Old Glory, the second one is Warlord Games, and the third one is a new manufacturer to the channel, a manufacturer called The Assault Group, usually just abbreviated to TAG or TAG. We look at Old Glory first. Now, they do models that are just under a pound a figure. They are, I have to say, rather dated for my opinion. So, you know, this is only my opinion. If you like them, you go large with them. I think they're pretty poor, to be honest. So... I'm not going to concern myself with Old Glory. It's not that they're terrible, it's just that they are very dated, and I think the detail on their models is it, it's not where... I, I would want my models to be in 2021, that's for sure. So I'm going to discount Old Glory. The second choice is Warlord Games. Now, they do a box of Janissaries, but we're not going to go with them either, and that's for two reasons. The first reason is, I just, I don't, again, I just don't think they're very good. I don't think they're very nicely sculpted. They've got weird-looking faces. Just, yeah, not for me, thank you. The second part is, as well, there's, weirdly, they've divided the box into two. So you get two sets of 12, one with firearms and one with swords and shields. So it means that in order to get a full order, a full unit, well, an odor, I guess it would be, you need to get two boxes, and that gives you two units, which is fair enough. But that means then you've got four command groups, because you get a command group for each of the, the 12 man subsections. So I'm not really sure what they were thinking there. It's. It, uh, <sighs> it answers on a postcard, I guess. They're, they're just. It's not great. I'll be honest, not great. So we're going to go with the third option, and that is the Assault Group. Now they are a manufacturer that's new to the channel, because they don't do specific. Napoleonic figures, although you will have seen, if you've seen any of my battle reports that include my St. Petersburg Opelcheni, you will have seen one of their figures, but we'll uh, we'll get to him in a second. Now, they do do unit boxes, unit builders. I would say their website is not the best in the world to navigate, by which I mean it's absolutely appalling. It's almost unnavigable. Unnavigable? Unnavigatable. Unnavigable, yeah, yeah. It's also unnavigable on a phone. It's, I mean, it's an absolute disaster. It's a horror show. On a laptop or a computer, it's not much better. But you can find, if you go to Shop, then Renaissance, then Unit Builder, and then in brackets it's got Renaissance after it, then you want to go to the third page of that, and that's where we get to the good stuff. And I have to say that you might actually want to set up an account with that website, because we're going to be using it quite a lot in this video. Now, I'm going to recommend that you get two sets of, quote, Ottoman Janissaries Advancing with Musket Unit Builder Box Set, end quote. And the reason I'm going to suggest that you get two of those is, it does say that you get two, that you will get a set of random packs. So, you may end up with some firing and some marching. And I, I never think that looks very good in a unit. If you don't mind it, then it doesn't really matter. That said, I recently ordered four of these unit builder sets, and they did them, uh, so I had a firing one, a marching one, an advancing one, and I got the right blister packs in each one. So I do think, although it says they can't guarantee that you're going to get the right ones, I think they obviously try and get you the right ones. So, you know, fair enough to them, but I, I can't guarantee, the same way that they don't, I can't guarantee that you will. If you just go for the marching ones, then that's fairly simple. Now, I said that these guys were not cheap, and I was not lying. These two units of 24 figures will set you back a total of £73.90. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a lot of money. I mean, you can get a plastic brigade deal for not much more than that. But the Sultan does not care for such minor quibbles as, as funding, so we'll move on and look at the next units to get for his army. Sticking with the assault group... We're going to grab some commands. So we're going to head over to the Renaissance Characters section. And for a mighty £1.95, pick up their Turkish officer. Now it's also in this section that you'll see 
the model who you may have seen in with the Opel Cheni, because they also do a really nice Russian Orthodox priest as well. So if you've got a Russian army or any friends who have a Russian army, I'd pick one of those up while you're here as well. So he's the only Ottoman character in that section. So we're going to head to the, the generic Ottoman section. And there we're going to pick up the Ottoman general and staff. And who can forget, well, well, I did when I ordered them, to be honest. Who can forget the regimental Kazan, the giant cauldron that they carried into battle with them. So these last two packs are going to cost us $9.95 and $7.95 for the, the command and the Kazan, respectively. And when we take the Turkish officer into account, then that's another £19.85, taking us to a total spend this month of £92.75. Now, for that money, we've got two Order of Infantry, some Brigade Command, and a Kazan. So we're off to a decent start, but we need our Janissaries to get some fire support. After all, they did love their big guns. Now, the Assault Group do sell a really nice gun. It's got a really nicely sculpted barrel. It's it's really, really nice. I'm not going to recommend it here, though. I mean, we'll probably pick one up in the future. So while we're not going to buy their cannon, we are going to buy two packs of their crew. They do one aiming and one firing, so it just allows a little bit of variation in our gun crews. And they're going to set us back another £15.90. Now, I'm going to pop somewhere else for our heavy artillery, and we're going to head over the pond... And we're going to hit up an American company called Indus Miniatures, another new-to-the-channel company. Now, they used to be distributed in the UK by Wargames Emporium. They don't seem to be anymore, but if you're interested, it might be worth dropping them a message just to see if they can still get their stuff in. And they do a range called the War in India. It's really based around the Seven Years' War, but it'll, it'll do us for here as well. In fact, I recently went to a wargaming show in Newark, Partizan. And there was an Indian Mutiny game, so that's sort of mid to late 19th century, mid 19th century, I think. And they were using the very cannons that I'm about to recommend. So there you go, the cannons can be used right through to the mid 19th century. It has the very imaginative name of Indian Artillery. And these also have really nice sculpted barrels, including one with a lion's head over the muzzle, which I think is particularly cool. Now these are $18, which my Google machine tells me it was £13.15. Now, obviously, it's probably going to be a bit more than that from PayPal, but I still think that's really, really good value. The Assault Group one was about 9 10 quid just for one gun. This one, let's let's even if we call it £15 for two guns, we're still doing quite well out of it. These combined with the Assault Group artillery crews that we bought earlier will give us our heavy, large, heavy battery of artillery and bring us to a monthly total of £122. So we're the vast, vast majority of the way through what's supposed to be buying the core of our army. And we've still only got some cannon, two cannons and two battalions of infantry. So we're going to need to bulk that up a little bit. And I'm going to recommend that we go over to the Perrys and we buy a box of Perry Miniatures Afghan Tribesmen for £20. Now these guys are obviously meant to be fighters from the Pashtun, but they work excellently as Egyptian Fellain. In fact, that's what I use as Fellain. They've got the, well, an Egyptian robe is called a Galabia, so it's slightly different from what the Afghans wear, but it's it's close enough for our representation. And the fact that they're so much cheaper, I think it it's worth overlooking some of the, shall we say, inaccuracies. One of which would be their weapons. Now, the Afghans, they have a sword called a Tulwa. It's an Indian weapon. The Egyptians, the Fellain, if they had swords, they would have used scimitars. So, you know, think sort of, you know, a comedy scimitar. That's very similar to what they would have used. The tulwa is a lot smaller. It's a, they're absolutely beautiful. I've got a tulwa here, actually. They're gorgeous weapons. But, um, yeah, so that's slightly different. If you were really that bothered, then you can just cut the sword off and just give them, like, a bit of plasti rod to count as a stick because often that's all the felling would be armed with. Now, you do get some firearms in there as well. I'm going to recommend that you give maybe one or two figures out of 24 a firearm, because they would have been incredibly rare. Things like fouling pieces, perhaps. perhaps. There, are, there used to be before the uh, NASA uh, Lake, Lake NASA and the Aswan Dam was built. There was quite a lot of marshland in Lower Egypt, so you'd have quite a few people with fouling pieces and things like that. But 
relatively rare. Don't use too many of them. Also, don't use too many of them because you get a lot of loose ones for like gluing onto their back and things like that. Keep them, put them to one side. We're going to need those bad boys next month. Now, there's enough models in the box to make two units of 18 figures, including the command, or one large unit of 36. So I'm going to leave it up to you what you want to do with that. I've made two smaller units, but realistically, one large unit would probably be the better way to go. But as we're getting started, I'd recommend probably going for the two slightly smaller units. Still count them as medium size, they're 18 figures, but... Yeah, I would go for that rather than the one large 36 figures one. I think it's just going to give you a little bit more variety if you're playing a game with this early army. Now, one other thing I should say about them is I've based them slightly different to normal. We'll get onto that in a second because now we're at £142. I think we really need to be in the market for buying some bases. Now, going to our perennial basing supplier, War Bases, I'm going to pick up two packs of 40 mil square bases for our Janissaries, one pack of 50 mil square bases for our Felain, and a pack of 60 millimeter round bases for our Command and our Kazan. Now we can use two of the 50s glued together to base our artillery, or you could even put them on a 60 mil round base if you wanted to. And these four packs will cost us seven pounds, taking us to 149 pounds on the nose. So that's for our first month. I think we've done yeah, all right there. Now, that said, we still have a pound left over. And I'm going to say that we can head over to Fluid 3D Workshop. There you go. And pick up one of their 150 mil by 100 mil bases for 90 pence. Now that is a big base, that's a big old base, that one. And what we can do with that is, instead of basing the Felain on 50 mil bases, which is what I've done at the moment, that's to give them that more warband look. What we can do is we can get one of those larger bases, base them on there, and the entire unit can go on that base. So 150 mil would be a frontage of six figures if you're on a 25 mil base. And obviously a depth of 100 would be 4. So 6 by 4 would be 25... Uh, sorry, would be uh, 24 figures with a 25 mil frontage. So you could just get the whole unit on that one base. Create like a mini diorama of them all dashing forward. With the odd guy squatting down to fire his Gisele. So that, that could look really, really good. Because they're a warband, they don't have formations anyway. So you're never going to need to move them from like column into line or into square or whatever. They're just a big mob of dudes. That could be a really good way to go. It's going to be more difficult for storage, but it's going to be easier on the tabletop, and it's going to look even more awesome. That's what I'm going to do going forward, although I must confess my first unit of Feline is on the 50 mil bases. So, what has the first month seen us by? Well, we have now two units of 24 Janissaries, two cannons, and either two units of 18 or one unit of 36 of the Feline. It provides... A, a, a decent-ish core to the army, but it must be said, it is not a lot of figures. For £150, at this point for the Prince of the War British one, I, I remember this because it was the last one I did, for that one we had, what, eight battalions of infantry at this point? Seven or eight battalions of infantry? Plus cannons, so yeah, it, it's they are a lot more expensive than the plastics. And this is one of the things, I think it just goes to show how revolutionary 28mm Napoleonic plastics have been. In fact, I may even do a Wednesday night video on this. So, yeah. No, no, no. I'm going to stop like there. I'm going to do a Wednesday night video on that. Okay, I think it needs a little bit more uh, more in-depth thinking about, shall we say. So, it's not a lot. But, I'll be honest with you. I don't think anyone goes into Napoleonic Ottomans as their main first army. It's very much a collector's army, this one. And as we head into month two... Well, we'll see, because we're going to be getting cavalry in that month, so uh, <laughs> don't be expecting the army to get much bigger. If you've, now, if you've seen my video on the Ottoman cavalry, well, on the Ottoman army, you'll have heard me say there that the Ottomans used a lot of cavalry. In fact, it wouldn't actually be unusual for the cavalry to outnumber the infantry, even in a Turkish army. And that would even more be the case in the troops that actually made contact and fought with the enemy. Unfortunately, as with the infantry... No one does a plastic Ottoman cavalry, and I'll be honest, I wouldn't be holding my breath for them to appear very soon either. So, I think in this case it's worth sucking up and splashing out on the metals. Now again, we're going to head back to the assault group, 
and we're going to have to take a deep old breath and our wallets are going to be uh, girded for this one because we're going to order two units of cavalry from their deals section and you can pick i mean in this one you can pick yourself between sipahi which they incorrectly call spahi spahi is something a bit different so uh, look for spahi but actually we're looking for sipahi so you can either get sipahi sipahi of the port which are effectively guard cavalry and delis the delis are the ones with the feathers on their shields they're all viable choices you go for the two of those three units that you think look coolest i'm going to recommend that we don't go for the delis here though and that we pick up a unit of sipahi and a unit of sipahi of the port and the reason for that is because they come in boxes of 12 because we're using units of eight with the 24 figures, we'll get three units of eight out of there. If we bought, say, Sipahi and Delhi, we'd have an eight of Sipahi with four left over and an eight of Delhi with four left over as well. So if we go for the two lots of Sipahi, then we can combine the, the leftovers to make a third unit of Sipahi. Now, these are the ultimate example of why I've upped the budget for this army, because those two unit deals are going to cost us... Uh, 91 pounds 90. Whew! 45 pounds 95 each. They are certainly not, not cheap. That's like four pounds a model. That's very, very expensive. And we're going to add on top of that an extra Sipahi of the Port Command Group. And that's going to act as our Cavalry Brigade Commander. So if that wasn't eye-watering sum for what's only really 24 figures... We can roll that back a little bit. Now, I said that no one does plastic Ottoman cavalry, and that was true, technically true, but there's, there is something that we can do to, to get some cheaper cavalry going on. And again, it's a new manufacturer to the channel. Not surprising, it's quite a well-known one, and that is Gripping Beast. They normally focus on Dark Age and earlier stuff, and we're going to be picking up some of their Arab light cavalries. It's really for the Crusades and the Arab conquest, but we're going to you know, leave off the odd shield here and there. As you still have a couple, don't get me wrong. And we're going to be selective from the heads that we use. There's a couple of very tartar looking heads, so we're going to get rid of those. We can even use some of the spare turbaned heads from the Afghan sets that we bought last, uh, last month. We can be careful about the heads that we use, and we can easily pass these guys off as 18th or 19th century. To be honest, you could possibly even um, pass them off as early 20th century Arab cavalry. Now, at an absolute stretch, we could get away with saying they're Mamluks, but it's unlikely. They would be, usually be wearing a very different outfit. Instead of the white robes, they'd normally be wearing a loose-fitting shirt and like a brocaded waistcoat. So we can't really get away with saying that they're Mamluks. I mean, you can, but they're more Arab cavalry than Mamluks. We can further add, you know, update them, shall we say, make them more in keeping with our period by, remember I said, don't use the spare Gisales that you got with the Afghans, or glue them to the backs of these guys or to their saddles or whatever. And that just, you know, it helps ground them in the period. It stops them looking like Dark Age Arab cavalry makes them look a little bit more like Napoleonic era desert raiders. Now I'm going to get two boxes of these, and these are they're a little expensive. They are twenty-two pounds a box for twelve minis. So we're going to spend forty-eight pounds, and that again that's going to get us three units of eight. So we've now got three units of Sipahi and three units of Arab light cavalry. With that forty-four pounds, that takes us to one hundred and forty-eight pounds which effectively tops us off for the month. Now, I am going to recommend a, a, an alternative approach. If you wanted a more Balkans-focused army, so that would be good for an army that, you know, the, the Turks had themselves. Maybe the one that raised the siege of Acre when Napoleon was besieging it, something like that. Or maybe it was mar an army that marches against the Wahhabists, something like that. I, I think that would be... A good all-rounded force but if you wanted one that's more focused on the balkans say your opponent has a russian army or maybe even an austrian army then we'll take back the arab cavalry we won't uh, won't go for those and instead we're going to head over to these are definitely not a new uh, manufacturer on this channel 
we're going to head over to our old faithful, the Perry Brothers. Now, one of the things I've really, really enjoyed about doing this video and doing the Ottomans in general is not only have we looked at manufacturers that we've never looked at before. So even in this video, we've looked at Indus Miniatures, Gripping Beast, and of course the Assault Group. But also we can look at areas in you know well-known manufacturers that perhaps we haven't really looked at and, and thought, you know, hmm, can that be used for Napoleonics? This is the case here. I'm going to head over to the Perry's Sudan metal range. And under the, so they subdivide the Sudan into three. There's extras, which is basically Gordon at Khartoum, the Sudanese, and the British. Now, under the British, they were sort of allies slash conquerors of the Egyptians. On the third page there, you come to my boys, the crazy heads, the Bashi Basuks. Now, this war was significantly later than the Napoleonic period, but they're basically wearing Albanian national dress. They're very similar to the Greeks in that respect, the sort of big baggy trousers, curly slippers, uh, waistcoats, and absolutely, one of my favourite words, festooned with weapons. So we'll grab the command pack, SB66, and three packs of SB67, Bashi Basuk's skirmishing. At a much more palatable £7.50 each, combined those four packs cost us 30 quid, taking us to £134.85. So we can still go for a unit of Arab Light Cavalry, we don't mind spending a little bit over our budget, but there's one thing I've not talked about at all in this video yet, and it's something which I think really makes the game. So even if you've gone for the, the Arab cavalry route, and you've only got £2 left. All we're going here, we've got £15.15 15 left over. One means you're going to have to spend over your budget, the other one doesn't. What we need are some Turkish Ottoman flags. They had flags a go go, they love their flags all over the place. And the best company I've seen that does them are War Games Design on eBay. Now, I will say their printing is not necessarily amazing. The colours aren't quite as vibrant as they might be. So you might want to go over a little bit with your own paint. But they do sheets of flags and pennants for a five or a throw, which is pretty good value, I think. You get something like 10, 10 or 12 flags for five pounds, which I think is pretty good. And they, uh, what I'm going to recommend is if we've got 15 pounds left over, if you've gone down the Bashi Basuks route, that we pick up one sheet of flags, because that'll be enough for everyone, and two sheets of pennants for... The Ottoman Turk Sipahi 1 and Ottoman Turk Sipahi 2. That's enough to distinguish our two units of Sipahi, although I said we're going to have to mix one of them into a unit, I suppose. And that extra £15, if we added that to the Bashi Basuks that we bought, will total us out at 149.85. If we added that on to where we'd bought the Arab cavalry route, this is me doing maths on the on the fly, never a good idea. I think we'd be at 173, I think. That sounds something something about that. Now, if we did go for that um, Arab cavalry, we're already at 173, and we haven't bought a commander for that Arab light cavalry brigade. So I'm going to recommend, again, that we go to the Perry Sudan range, and this time we look at the Sudanese section. So not the British, the Sudanese part of that. And we'll pick up SA2 Mounted Command. That gives us a caliph and two emirs. But now we're, we've, we're a lot closer to £200 than we were 150 So, you know, it's cool. I mean, if you if you were to go without the flags, you could maybe buy him if you got the Gripping Beast Cavalry online. You'd save that money and then you'd be closer to 150 But I think if you don't get the flags for the Ottomans, you're really, really missing out. Unfortunately, they're one of those armies that... As I've said several times in this video, they're really, really not cheap. And it's a shame because they're a cool army. They're cool for the Renaissance as well. But it, unfortunately, just the way it goes, they're not actually that cheap. They're main manufacturer, the Assault Group. They are the nicest figures on the market for this period, in my opinion. But they are, unfortunately, not only the most expensive Ottoman figures, they're actually quite expensive for figures. They're, they're, I mean, we're talking not nearly Games Workshop prices. Now, because of that, what do we have for our £300 or £300 and a bit pounds spend? Well, we have two units of 24 Janissaries with Command and a Kazan. We have one battery that consists of two huge cannons with their crew. And we've also got a mob of armed peasants to go with them. 
In cavalry wise, we've got three units of medium cavalry, and we've either got three units of light cavalry, or we've got a unit of elite light infantry. Now, for three hundred pounds, that does not sound like a lot, and I have to say that is in fact not a lot. You can get more if you go down the old glory route. I don't, because I don't particularly like those models. But if you're okay with them, if you think they look fine, then go with them, because they are significantly cheaper. Now, in this video, I have not even touched on Nizam el Jedid or really looked at Marmalukes. So if that is something you would like to see, now please let me know in the comments down below. I just want to say thank you very, very much for watching. I've got an idea for Wednesday's video. I hope you're going to enjoy it. But I want to give a huge shout out to those who have joined the channel. Thank you very much. You've enabled me to keep going. I'll be honest with you guys. It's been a little bit tough now. The hospital is getting back to full um, full business. I know you don't want to hear this. This is not woe is me or anything. But it has been tough to keep the motivation going. And it's you guys and the guys in the Discord that have really, really kept me going. So thank you very much for that. And I hope to see you guys next time.